Hi, my name's Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Final Cut Help. Today, we're going to take a look at how to use compressor to compress a video clip for use on a video iPod. Now, this is a very popular way. It opens up the world of podcasting as a distribution channel, plus it's a great way to send things over to a client for them to show others. Put the video in their pocket so they can brag, show it off when people have questions, things like that. So, let's jump in and show you how you can easily do this using Compressor. Now, when you launch Compressor, there's a whole bunch of different areas to the interface. What I recommend is you go under the Window menu and you choose Layouts, and then choose one of the standard sort of layouts so you can get things set up. Now, once we've got that, we can load files in. Easiest way to do that is to click the Add File button, and a file navigation service box comes up. Now, you can grab video from anywhere. It could be a self-contained file, or if you want to do it really quick and you're working on the same system that you edited, simply use a reference file from Final Cut Pro that you export. We'll go ahead and grab that clip, and you want to give it a high quality clip. Now, in general, you should export from your Final Cut sequence using the same settings that you use to edit with. This means don't apply any additional compression. So if your sequence is DV, export DV. If you're working with something else, spit that out as well. Now, there are other ways to access Compressor. For example, in Final Cut Pro, you could choose File, Export with Compressor. But what we're dealing with here is using a self-contained or reference file. That's pretty easy. Once you've got it in, you need to apply Settings and Destinations. Now, both of these are found down here in these two tabs. The first one is Settings. If you open up the Apple folder, you'll see several options, including Workflows, Formats, DVD, and Apple Devices. What we're using here is the Apple Devices category, so just twirl that open if it's closed, and you'll see three choices. The first is an Apple TV, which works great for, of course, Apple TV, but also to do high-quality compressions for use on a laptop, such as a keynote presentation. The other two are intended for newer iPods. So if you're using a really old video iPod that wants an MPEG-4 file, these settings won't work without some customization. But the two here are going to be all set for every new iPod or iPod Touch or iPhone for that matter. Simply use these. Let's go with the bigger one here, the 640x480, and drag that onto the clip. Now, when you do that, it's a good idea to preview things. So what I recommend is click the Preview button so you can open it up and take a look. And you're going to want to drag through and look at the actual clip. Make sure Correct for Pixel Aspect Ratio is turned on so you get a good idea of what you're seeing. And then shuttle on through. There we go. The little divider bar here lets you see the compression before and after. So, this is looking pretty clean, but you'll notice that the text does get a little bit softer with the compression applied. If you want to tweak those settings, simply go to the inspector. Now, what I recommend before you start going too far is to duplicate the settings so you can easily come back to the original if necessary. To do this, we'll just click on the H.264 for iPod video, and we'll click the Duplicate button here. Notice it adds it down in the custom folder. Let's go ahead and click on that and rename it. And we'll call this H.264 for iPod Video Test. Now the inspector is very straightforward. You just click on each tab and take a look at it. Here, it's going for an H.264 for Apple devices. You'll see that we have other formats, but let's stick with this Apple devices profile. The extension .m4v is fine, and the device is specified as an iPod or iPhone. If you were working with widescreen video that was anamorphic, you would want to change this here. Let's go down here and take a look at audio. 128 kilobits is the normal rate. 256 would be a bit beefy for web review. And then you see that we actually have the frame sync. Now, every five seconds is fine. You can also click automatic to have it analyze the file and do what's needed. Automatic takes a little while longer, but it will produce a cleaner file. Another important option is the ability of multi-pass encode here. Make sure that's checked. It will take longer to create, but you get a smaller file and it's much cleaner. Let's go to our other tabs real quick. You see here in the inspector we have frame controls. If we needed to do a resize, we could, but this clip is going to be just fine. Take a look at our next one. We have the ability to de-interlace. Now, de-interlacing is only going to be applied if you shot interlaced material. 
Many of you have switched to progressive material, but if not, you may want to turn the deinterlace filter on. I will also do a little bit of black and white restore, and we'll put this at a small value. And what you'll see is that the black and white restore makes the blacks a little bit crisper and makes the whites a little bit brighter. Now in order to see this, I recommend dragging that test setting onto your clip so it's applied, then pick it from the drop down menu here. This way you can see it as you update. That's looking pretty good. Everything else seems to be set. Let's just make sure that it's all set to the correct output, 640 by 480. That's fine. It matches this original clip. And we're all set there. I'll go ahead and delete away the setting I don't need. And now all we need to do is specify a destination. By default, it's going to go to the same place that the original clip was stored. If you don't want that, go to the Destination tab. Under Destinations, you'll see lots of options. You could choose to go right back out to the source, the desktop, your movies folder, or storage area. You can also create your own destination, such as a remote server or a specific place on your hard drive. Let's go ahead and change this to desktop, and we'll just go ahead and click Submit, and the job is added and processed. Give it a name, set the destination, and click Submit, and it'll start to process. So that's how Compressor works. Very straightforward program and great for doing formats that are going to work with Apple devices. For Final Cut help, I'm Rich Harrington, and I invite you to head on over to creativecow.net where you can check out the Final Cut forum there, as well as get great advice on using Compressor and other tools in Final Cut Studio. Thanks for watching.